What is going on you guys? My name is Hugh and welcome to the Nerf Slayer build video. Now the footage is a little scattered on this one because I started this project almost a year ago, but I never came around to finishing the design of the outfit. And this was mainly due to the fact that I wanted to try a different approach to creating my own version of a Doom Slayer or the Doom Slayer, I should say. And after about a year or as of a month or two ago, I drew up a new blueprint for how I wanted to build it. And the approach was, well, I want to do the new school Doom with the, the helmet and the knife and everything, the double barrel shotgun, but with a little bit of old school Doom from the 90s as well. So incorporating that was a very, very difficult task for me because I love both versions of Doom. I grew up playing the Doom games from all the way back in the 90s, all the way up until now with Doom and Doom Eternal. I came up with a new idea as of recently, to redesign the outfit, scratch all the old blueprints that I had. However, I did keep some of the original blueprints like the gauntlets. The gauntlets was the first thing I did because it was the easiest thing to build, and that came out successful. Uh, the only thing I have to work on now is fixing the little nubs on it because I lost quite a bit of them <laughs> when we filmed that sketch video. Uh, so I had to fix the nubs on the gauntlet, mainly due because I was using hot glue. Super glue was way better, so every time a nub came off, super glued it back on but i will go back and revisit this costume again so this is only version one um is more of like a slap together version because i had a i was on a crunch line to get the sketch video done in time for you guys so if i rush this a little bit that's probably why but it's because i like being on a timeline it's like i gotta get this done that's out of the way so now i can move on to the next project so i can multitask a little bit but sometimes it's a bad idea, especially if you're doing sketch videos and you're also doing a costume build. So it's it's really difficult to do both at the same time with trying to balance the time zone. So with that said, let's go over the entire build of this video, uh, starting with the gauntlets way back about a year ago.
Okay, so it's been a while since the last time I did an update on this costume here. Uh, but, just to kind of go over a few things you guys might have missed if I didn't film any of it. So I got the ab pieces connected to a piece of strapping that I have. It's not elastic unfortunately, but I think for these pieces, these can crunch pretty well. So, if you're crunching down, this will kind of hover over each ab, like layers. Uh, which my I don't do a lot of core movement, so I think I'll be okay But at least these are flexible enough and they're bendable So it's not gonna get stuck on me or and it's not gonna be like a penguin suit at least the midsection has been updated a little bit So I got the one of these little black panels here and up there So that's gonna be stuck to the back of this one and I'm gonna stick a piece of velcro on the back of this so That way I can get this piece on and off I also went ahead and attached the pieces here uh, with the same strapping that I had left over so that way everything can bend in one motion and not split apart um, It also keeps the form correct too. So if I bend this around myself, this will bend with it So both pieces will bend at the same time. So we just got done with the chest piece There's not a whole lot of stuff on the chest piece even from the video game I didn't like scratch marks and these little grill pieces here But I kind of chopped in some scratches some indentations in the armor a little bit just to kind of give it a little bit of detail, but not too much. Because um, once that's all painted, all that will blend in and all these scratches and stuff will show pretty well. Now the spinal system is interesting. So I haven't attached any of these pieces yet, but I have a piece of elastic right here. Actually, I have a bunch of them. Yeah, I got small and little ones, it looks like. And the way these spines are going to work is that they're going to be able to stretch apart like this when you bend down and also move side to side. So it acts like an actual spinal piece, which is pretty dope. I've never done something like this before. So I hope, one, I made enough pieces. So that should be going from the top of the armor, from here, down to my tailbone, or at least to my belt line. If not, I'll probably just spread them out a little bit more like this, instead of being too close together. And then that way, it goes all the way down to the bottom. <laughs> That's going to be pretty dope once I get that all, like, blue printed out, layered out, and glued together. That system should work really well. But with that said, um, I haven't created the back panels on here, so I'm not sure if I want to do back panels on here because you're not going to see the back of the armor that much, mainly the chest plate. But if I do decide to add that, you'll see it in the video later on when I do the full review of that. But I think for now, I think we're ready to go. Uh, everything is pretty much put together, got some details on here carved out. I think it's some painting time. Alrighty, so I want to give you guys a full walkthrough of the outfit because I didn't film a lot of the finishing processes on the chest piece and the abs here. So I'm going to go over those for you as well, but also um, just as an overall kind of review of how the outfit went, especially for the film that we did, if you haven't seen it yet. Um, if it's not posted yet, then check up here. If it is, then yeah, check the YouTube channel. It should be posted after this, after or before this video, but we'll see. But yes, I'm going to go over this real quick. So if you guys do decide to tackle this on your own, uh, or if you have your own interpretation of how to make a Doom Slayer, Doom Guy outfit, 
let's go talk about this for a minute. So we're going to start down here with the pants. Um, I've had these shin guards for a very long time. I don't know if you can even get these anymore. Uh, but you can get any sort of shin guards painted up to whatever color you want. And I found these to be the best ones because they're actually very practical. So if I go to kneel down, this actually protects my knee and it doesn't get scratched up as much too. Overall, these actually helped a lot when you try to get knee poses or one knee shots. Or if you're just trying to get on one, one leg for a pose. Great, actually. It's actually practical. I think it's baseball catcher's gear or something like that. Very, very smart 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 idea so for doom guy i wanted to go a little more practicality so i designed basically this entire outfit with new school and old school doom slayer so the 1990s version and the 2016 and up version also with a little bit of practicality for airsoft fights so the shin guards came from that idea the gloves and the uh, shoulder pads that all came from the practicality of the idea of like oh we could use this for airsoft battles or nerf battles and the pants I decided to go with were just some regular, I think they're green or army green uh, cargo pants. And it worked really well because these were already damaged. I had them just laying around, which was fine. And this was the same utility belt that I've used on the uh, Big Time Spidey outfit. If you haven't seen that costume, I'll leave a link up here or down in the description below so you can check out that costume. That guy. So moving right along up here, we got the mid-ab section and then the uh, this whatever bracket you want to call that. The issue I was having when I kept trying to test fit this was that this piece was just sticking off. So when it lays flat on my stomach, it boink, it sticks up. But I fixed that. So here, here, and here, all is elastic in between these two pieces here. So I gotta bring this piece up a little bit so that all that shifts up. This is sitting a little bit too low where my belt is, so I gotta fix that. So when you move it around, the abs kind of go with the body shape. And it's nice because it's flexible, it's not stiff, you're not wearing a freaking penguin suit or something. Especially for like free floating armor like this where it's supposed to be attached to some kind of undersuit where I don't have that. So this is my undersuit, it all attaches to these elastic bands. And it's great, it works fantastic. My only problem now is these stick out. So I have to find a way to either attach it to the chest plate or have it attached here so that when this folds, this folds with it. But the entire midsection works really well. Like it's very flexible, it contours my body, you can shimmy around, you can move side to side, you can bend over, you can bend backwards. It works fine at all, stretches and moves exactly how body armor should. Now let's go up a little bit. Actually, I want to address this piece here. This was the spinal column system I invented. So when same thing like the abs here, this can stretch out and in, it can stretch side to side. But <laughs> I think I made this a little bit too big. So it goes way past my belt line. So that's where the belt loop goes. So it's a little bit too big. I made him put too many of these spines in here. So I'm going to readjust that cut one piece off, shorten it, and then that should fix the issue. And now these gloves I found on Amazon, just some regular fighting gloves. You can find a bunch of these on Amazon, multiple different versions. All right, so now for the big piece. This was a interesting portion of the build. Now, pretty much this whole thing is a, I don't know what size, I guess it's an XL shoulder pad that I found at like one of my uh, used sporting goods places. And I got it for like 60 bucks. And this whole system works great because it is as close as I can get it to Doom Guy's armor from the new game, but also a little bit of the old school version. And I didn't show this on camera, but this chest piece has this little tap light. Now you could just push it, but unfortunately, how thick this foam is, you cannot push it, <laughs> which is kind of disappointing. But what I wound up doing is having some Velcro straps back here, so if I can get this off one hand, this whole piece comes off like Velcro. Ta-da! Come over here and I could put a battery in it. Now, unfortunately, I can't get, well, I guess I can get to the other ones. I haven't tried yet, but with this, I can just remove one of these just to discharge it and then put it back in to recharge it. Look at that. Now, I know it's not red, but I kind of like the orange. That's all I had laying around. It was just some like folder binder stuff or whatever it was. Matter of fact, I think I have it laying around, but all it is is just like binder divider stuff or whatever. <laughs> and I just cut a little circular piece, stuck it in the tap light, 
And then there you go. I cut in some designs here, made a little more 3D, some scratches here. I still need to put some blood on this, so it's too clean for me. I need to put some blood marks or something around the scratches, so it's a little bit more gruesome. This helmet is actually handcrafted. Yes, I said handcrafted on Etsy. I got it from a gentleman who makes a bunch of these on Etsy. Uh, don't remember how much I paid for it. If I find out about it, I'll leave it in the description, but it's a very, very well detailed helmet. I love how this guy did all this by hand. All the little details are all hand painted. I mean, this looks super, super cool. Probably one of my favorite helmets I've collected over the years. So if I do find where I got this again, I'll leave it in the description. I got it from a gentleman on Etsy. Very, very talented artist. He did a fantastic job on this helmet. <laughs> Definitely goes on the display show with my uh, Halo 3 helmet and Doom Guy. Now if it comes to the back of this, the only thing on here is just this little detail piece I add. I just kind of slapped it together, painted it green and threw it on. But that's what I do. I like fiddling. I don't like having anything too plain, so I wanted to have some kind of like visualization back here. Um, and this is where the spine piece used to sit. It sat right in here, but like I said, it was too long, so I had to chop it off. So I think I might drop the spine system on this, just remove that, have a blank back. Um, cause this also wraps around my entire body, which is fine. So it gives the back some kind of detail and that's fine with me. I think I'll pass on the spinal idea. Just keep the old school doom slayer with a little bit of the new school ab system. And that's it. I'm good with that. Now you're probably wondering, Hey, wait, where's the shotgun? I actually made that shotgun years and years and years ago, which I'll leave that up on the eyeball. Or if I forget there, then it's going to be down in the description below where I basically made my own Nerf double barrel shotgun from the uh, Doom 2016 game that launched that year. But other than that, I'll leave all that down there for you guys so you can do your own research and kind of experiment with your own Doom Slayer costume. This is gonna be strictly called the Nerf Slayer costume because it looks like it's built for like Nerf battles or airsoft battles or something like that, you know? Very, very simple, very easy, and very, very low budgeted too. All this was like two pieces of foam for all this stuff and it turned out super, super great. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a fat thumbs up. Let me know what you think of the costume, if you do a version 2 or not. I think I might do another update on this for sure. You guys have an awesome rest of the week, and I'll see you goons. Hold on. Where you are? Oh, stay right here. Ah! <laughs> I'm in the Saints. I'm fixing my servers! Not I'll see you goons later. <laughs> <laughs>